Hello friends and welcome to a 7 Days to Die Alpha 11 in-depth look at XML files. We're going to be doing a series of this as there are quite a few XML files to explore and I want to do each one in depth. So starting off, we're going to go to our 7 Days to Die folder in the Steam library. So I've got a shortcut here. Uh, generally, you're going to have your Steam library installed on your C drive probably in your local computer and then probably either program files or steam steam apps and common i do recommend installing steam outside of your program files to avoid user uh, uac policy violations on some files so we're going to go into steam steam apps common seven days to die and into our data directory and we'll be looking at the data directory for all these files we're looking in the config file so this is where all of your XML files are going to live. So we're going to start off basically going one through the other, well, a bunch of different videos. Uh, I may skip some of them and some of them we may cover on multiple video uh, in one multiple files in one video. Let's start off with the biomes.xml file. Now this file is what is used to control how biomes are generated, what's in an individual biome as far as the overall look and feel goes. Uh, I'm going to be using a text editor called Notepad++. Um, you can use your text editor of choice. I just happen to prefer Notepad++ as my default. It's an open source program. It's very useful and powerful and uh, allows nice looking XML files to be viewed. So open this up. Now the pimps have done a good job of going through the XML files and cleaning things up and uh, adding comments uh, into those files. So. Look at this weather definitions that's starting to happen. So these are it's a precursor of what's going on. Uh, obviously you can control um, a lot of things um, later on here in the weather, but for now the weather is not really used other than this spectrum uh, effect, which affects the overall look and feel of the atmosphere in that, in that area when that happens. But we're gonna scroll down and we're going to look at the biomes themselves. So they currently have uh, 14 different biomes defined. Snow, forest, pine forest. Uh, forest, this is the maple forest. Plains, desert, water, radiated, which we aren't really seeing other than, than in the Navisgain map. Wasteland, burnt forest, city, city wasteland. Uh, the wasteland hub it has its own kind of definition. And interestingly enough, cave floors and cave ceilings. I guess this is so they can spawn... Um, slag tights and slag mites um, and possibly either the, the also on the ceiling you're probably going to get the uh, m uh, moss uh, as well and the floor you'll get mushrooms you wouldn't want mushrooms appearing on the ceilings of caves so it's very interesting they actually separate those out and we may look at those a little bit as far as uh, what we could change as well they've got some uh, decorative properties going on here um, but we're going to kind of ignore all of that <clears throat> and scroll right down to our first meaty area. So we've got the snow biome. So the snow biome is defined from to the closing biome tag here. So basically from one, line 134 on this file to line 61. So it's about 130 lines of decoration of, uh, sorry, 70 lines of information to define this. Now, one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is there is a sub biome defined. Now you can have more than one sub biome in a biome. So a sub biome in this particular case, this is where you'll find um, blueberries. So there's the, the, these little clumps of blueberries throughout the snow biome, as you probably have discovered. And then this sub biome is how they define those regions to, uh, to have those different kinds of uh, spawning areas. Now each Subbiome gets a probability factor. Pretty much everything has a probability factor outside of the main biome itself. Now that probability is, is what is the percentage chance of this subbiome occurring in each kind of chunk as the biome is generated. So here we have, it's a ranges from zero to one with one being a hundred percent. So basically if you wanted to have more of those clusters of blueberries you could go in here and say give me two so basically two out of every 10 on average this is not precise remember you're talking random values here so you're not going to get 
every for for example if you pick the 10 block area you're not going to get two blocks of that sub biome but there's a 20 percent chance that you'll get two blocks does that make sense um, statistics become a little confusing when you're dealing with small numbers but on large numbers um, of chunks you're going to get in this case 10 percent or 20 percent of them to have that sub biome now the layers indicate what uh what can be found uh in the ground of that biome and we'll look at that a little bit more down here but basically they're just saying layer one depth snow so you're gonna get snow on top that's all they care about everything else can be the regular inherited uh property of the biome decorations this is where you get what you find in that biome so here for example we get snow grass diagonal we get blueberries and this is where you know the blueberry is again each little block inside of that biome which is got will have a random size or shape um what percentage again going from zero to a hundred is going to have that so if you want to have more blueberries appearing here we have you know 0. 0.0 so if you multiply it by 100 um, it's a you know 2.5 percent chance of having any given block uh, be a blueberry plant so if you wanted to for example double the number of blueberries you could go in here and just change this to 0.5 and then you would get five percent of the blocks in that sub biome would contain a blueberry plant Let's set that back so for example we, we get grass 40 percent of the blocks have grass on them uh there is a one percent chance of getting rocco five which is a particular kind of snow covered ro small rock rocco six rocco seven all these are defined um, these are three different kinds of small um, covered rocks um, so each one of those has a one percent chance of those forming uh, you get a resource rock, which is a nice big rock. There's two different kinds of those, two different models for those resource rocks. So there's two different ones of them. Each one has a 2.5% chance of appearing and rotating. They can rotate um, in different orientations. Um, there's also a bird's nest and the loot forest. Loot forest is a uh, loot group, which is defined um, under the... And I think it's undefined under under the groups.xml file, and we'll cover that later on. But this is basically a loot table. So basically, that would be a uh, a backpack or whatever that could be found there. Um, very small chance of that. 0.1%. Um, again, 0.1% chance of a bird's nest. So if you wanted more bird's nests, you could up this as well. So down to, so if you also wanted to add another thing in here, if you knew what it was, for example, you wanted to have um, a, a particular kind of tree, you could have a tree added in there as well. Or maybe you wanted to have a sofa up here. You could add that sofa in there if you wanted to. You could add as many items in here as you want to, and you can add as many sub biomes as you want as well. So you could copy this whole entire thing, change it, and then add different things. Like maybe for example, you wanted to have some coal as an option, you go in here. Oops, I want to make sure you always check your XML. Luckily, your notepad tells me right away that I've got a complete node. Um, so maybe I go in here and I can just change it to, uh, let's say change it to sand. So now we have, and this wouldn't make any sense in a snow biome, but now we would have one block depth of sand on top in this biome. Everything else would be the same. So that would look kind of strange, I would think. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now, down to the main biome definition. So this layers area defines how uh, the biome overall is filled up. And again, the sub biome will come along and depending upon what you've got in the layer section here will override this main layers area. So we've got, um, I'm, I'm not yet specifically sure what this is, this is, I think this is fill up to the origination point of water. Um, I, I haven't played with that enough to really tell you what's going on there, but we got one block deep of snow. If you want snow to be deeper, you could actually set the snow. So you have to dig down more than one block to hit dirt. 
um, that would be up to you as well. Maybe you wanted to have really deep snow. You can come in here and say, let's go four blocks deep snow. And then uh, at depth five, we'll start dirt. And in that, in that layer, there is a basically 20% chance of finding clay. So for, again, kind of every 10 blocks, two of those blocks would on average be clay. I hope that makes sense. You could also, for example, go in here and say, we're going to add sand. And we'll actually run this so we can see it in action. So let's say there's a 10% chance of that being sand. So once we dig four blocks deep in snow, we have a chance of finding clay and a smaller chance of finding sand. We'll go down a little farther down. And so basically this is going to go down from five all the way down to um, 20. We're going to find stone. So in the stone, you have all these resources and you've got cat cave uh, possibilities. So you have three blocks of that. So you go all the way down. Um, with stone and everything else is all stone caves again. So you, down here you get iron ore, coal, or potassium. So this this all now relates to the cave generation. Um, so if you didn't want caves, you could take off this caves. And there's actually up here at the top. There's three def different possible resource generations. There's noise. There's caves, and there's all. And it just finds them. Um, if you could have it do the noise base, which is a Perlin worms, which will be like the, the uh, resources that can navigate so no, so no caves. You could have it do ca caves for the resource nodes, or you could have it do both. So you could have it be both caves and the Perlin worms. Um, I may experiment with that later on because it might be nice to be able to dig down just anywhere and find resources. Right now, if you dig down, you're gonna find caves or stone. So it's a little different now. Um, Okay, so we got some changes there, and then we'll go down here as well. Uh, there's some just random decorations. So this is random decorations um, across the entire uh, biome. So these are all the different generations. Um, so you can say birds' nests generally much lower percentage chance than in those uh, sub biomes. So in the sub biome with the blueberries, you also find more birds' nests. So if you wanted to up the overall chance of finding birds' nests, you could go in here and increase it as well. So if you wanted like a bird's nest on every block, you could set that, which would then cause other problems because nothing else would spawn. Um, and I believe that the way it runs is it goes through the list. So it'll try and do snowstorm. And now this, interestingly enough, this block is what generates the kind of billowing snowstorm um, effect. So if you actually place these blocks in creative, and I'll show that in another video later on. If you actually place these in a block, you'll actually get a snowstorm um, atmospheric condition, which is kind of cool. Uh, otherwise, again, all the regular resources all placed in there. Uh, and a new thing in here, terrain class mountains. So this defines how up and down um, things go. All right, sorry about that. <coughs> Got a uh, call away with the cat issue. A little cat fight going on. So uh, where was I talking about? Oh, terrain classes. Now these are not defined yet in any XML file. I'm hoping they are at some point. So I'm assuming that this basically will control like uh, vertical displacement. So you get um, higher, steeper terrain. But for example, if you wanted to have your uh, snowy areas be like flat tundra, you could pick, uh, let's see, where's our deserts? Um, water, main biome, water, which I'm very interested in checking out. Uh, you could maybe go to hills, which would be smaller, rolly hills. Um, the burnt forest uses mountains, um, terrain type city, so really flat. Um, well, wasteland, wasteland. 
All right. So I. Th oh. Oh. Hmm. What's it coming? What's it coming? I love looking through these files because you'll find these nice little treats stuck away. So anyway, like I was saying, you could probably change this up for something else. Like look up the plains biome or the forest biome and grab forest and use it instead. So you wouldn't have uh, steep, steep mountains. You have more flat ground. So again, you could just kind of change up uh, how you want everything to look. So let's go ahead and change this and check it out in game so we can see what the difference looks like. So what we've done is we have... Uh, where our biome, the sub, sub biome goes here. We added in more snow in the main whole area, and we've added a chance of sand along with clay if we dig down just a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll load up the game, and then we'll take a look and see what kind of differences that is. So give me just a moment here, and we'll check it out. Okay, I found a uh, snow biome after a few minutes of looking around. It was kind of rare, and I actually found right into a sub biome. So there's one of those sub biomes. There's our little blueberries, etc. So let's go ahead and grab a shovel. We start digging down, and we're just finding snow. Just like we should have. Now we get this nice deep snow. And it's interesting to see as well what it does uh, with the texture blending um, to do that. So now we are down to our fertile dirt. So let's just dig around a little bit here and see if we can find our clay. We got our clay. So let's see if we can find sand as well which is gonna be rare it can be more rare but I know it's gonna be here I have faith so rather than have you guys watch me do this I'm gonna I'm gonna dig until I find snow or sand while I was looking around for sand, I uh, stumbled across this, and I thought you guys would be interested in seeing it just as well. Here is a snow cave. So they do exist, and they should be explored. I mean, that is going to be even creepier with the snow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to go in the snow cave of hell. No, please. No, thank you. All right, I'll be back. Okay, here we have sand. I have determined and found nice piles of sand. I, whoa, and it, don't drop sand on yourself. It does cause owies. So uh, I also found it does matter what the order is. Let me go ahead and alt tab out. The order of your sand or your resources does indicate really strongly drives what's being driven first. I think basically it's a block if it matches that first, it's always going to generate clay. So if you want your if you want your your sand to be a better odds, even if it's the same percentage lower down, clay seems to be more predominant. I also went ahead just to just to show you guys. I went ahead and changed the terrain class from mountain to forest, and I wanted to show you guys what that looks like um, in the game. So I think we are we're clear of that. Yep. Let's fly up out of here. So you can see that the terrain is much flatter than the mountain areas are. You saw the small little... Oh, there's a nice prefab. Uh, so you see the terrain is much flatter. No, none of those huge peaks and valleys that you normally get in the desert, in the uh, mountains class. So that's how you would kind of adjust this and make it a little different. So if you want to get rid of the huge mountainous areas, this is what you want to do. You want to change that to forest. You still get hills, but now you get these uh, uh, just rolling hills and more uh, flat ground to build on. So if you wanted to change things around, that is how you do it. Let me go ahead and quit out of this game.
All right. So again, I changed the train type from uh, mountain to forest. So we put that back. Uh, fountain. Fountain. There we go. Um, and you could also change the the uh, forest uh, spectrum. In fact, I was going to show you guys that. Let me go ahead and change the. Actually, I don't need to change. We're going to spawn in. I think it's kind of funny. Let's do. Let's go back to our game here. Start it up. It should be really quick. So I'm not going to bother pausing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and. Oops. We're going to go. Ahead. Oh, you also noticed that we had these huge lakes because the forest. Um, uh, generator will generate those nice big lakes. We want large lakes in your frozen tundra. This is how you would do that. All right, let's go ahead and teleport over here, just for examples. All right, let's go into our creative, and I think it's called Snow Snowstorm One. And I think this is really kind of cool. So, if you were building a creative world. See that? You get this snowstorm effect being generated in this chunk. And I think the more of these you get, it'll kind of stack up the... So now you get this nice billowing snowstorm effect. And I'm not sure how far it goes, but it seems like it's going pretty... pretty good distance. Yeah, so it's a pretty. It seems to kind of waft off in one direction and then fade away, like the wind is carrying it. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, I'm assuming there's a similar one for uh, the embers. In fact, let's go ahead and look. Burnt. Burnt paneling. Burnt pine, burnt forest ground. What was this thing called again? Snow. Snowstorm, dust storm. Nope. Let's look for storm. Up ah, sandstorm, snowstorm, and smoke stump. Oh okay, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Just to see all of them. I know this is a little bit off of the XML editing, but you know what? You gotta have some fun once in a while. So this is the sandstorm. So that's that's what the sandstorm effect looks like. Just stick it up the sandstorm a little bit. That's cool. It's an interesting way of how it's interesting how they implemented that feature. And then seven, it's going to be our embers. So there's that. I think this is the nicest effect. It's a slower moving kind of haze, etc. All right, one last thing I was going to show you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and quit out of this game. My world's all messed up now. Uh, last thing I was going to show you was what I've done to my forest biome. Because uh, one of the things that you heard me complain about, probably if you're watching my videos, is the lack of sand. So what I did is I went in and I created... It's a, the the sub-biome does not exist in the forest. So I basically created a new sub-biome um, that was very similar to the to the uh, pine forest sub biome that does exist and I went ahead and added a three block deep layer it probably doesn't need to be that deep maybe two blocks would be fine or even one block deep of sand so it's a sand a sand trap pit area that's got a resource of 20 percent chance of having clay uh, mixed in with that sand so that gives you a nice sand clay little pits that are around and let me go ahead and show you what those uh, are going to look like so we're already in already in here and i'm sorry going back and forth here so we're in a pine forest now so let me pause and get to a uh, maple forest and then we'll be right back all right okay and we're back and here we go there's one of those little sub biomes that i've added to my maple forest biome uh, comes complete with zombie no it doesn't that just happened to be there but uh, here we see uh, sand. Uh, it'll be, you know, right now it'll be three blocks deep. 
and you can harvest that. So I'm hoping that at some point here in the near, oh, the cave, uh, in the near future, they change these rivers to have uh, at the bottom of the sand as well. That would be perfect, and I'd be happy. All right, well, that's it for now. Um, in this video, again, we covered the basic biomes uh, XML file, how to change things up, how to increase the probability of things uh, spawning, how to create new sub biomes, um, how to change the overall look and feel. Um, and even if we wanted to to change things like the, where's he going? Where's, he go? oh, wait, uh, how low am I? There we go. Now, now you can't get me, ha ha ha. Uh, change resources that you can find. Um, Etc. So nicely done. Nice, 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 nice. And on the map, you can change color. Who cares about that? Oh, also, I think I mentioned sub biomes. You can have multiple sub biomes, different, different probabilities uh, to increase more than whatnot. So, uh, yeah, experiment away. Remember, you can always revert uh, your, ch your changes, but I should always recommend when you're making these changes, right click that file, copy it. Make a new one called back or something like that. So you always have the original one to be able to go back to. Worst case to worst, you can go into Steam and go and verify your game cache and it'll restore the files to the proper look. For now, it's been Ron the Bold and uh, look forward to next items. We'll be covering more of these XML files in future videos. But for now, if you liked it, click that like button, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, family, and your grandma how to mod. And I'll see y'all later. Bye. Oh, wow.